football is increasingly becoming a game of doing business rather than football itself, which is the bit that we all love about football, but sadly we don't get enough of at the moment. Now, we need to remember that doesn't mean that you can't combine good business and good football. And that is, at the end of the day, how you improve the football, by doing good business, and that makes everything a little bit easier to do. And thankfully, Leeds are taking steps in the right direction on that particular front, which is absolutely wonderful, because the Whites have a genius new transfer strategy that is becoming more and more revealed as time goes on. Now, I'm going to talk about all sorts of bits in this one, so the approach that we are taking, the approach other clubs are taking, the Red Bull model, it's not as scary as it sounds, but stick around and you'll find out more about that. How it helps clubs, what the concerns are, and ultimately the sort of verdict on it. But to start with, this all began and the sort of cogs in my head started turning when we started discussing the recent news around Ngenge. Can't remember the guy's first name, but he is a left back, 16 years old, I believe from Nigeria, that Leeds United are looking at signing. And it feels like if we're not to sign him, it'll be work permit stuff that basically prevents us because... Work permits are very, very complex in the world of football. And this sort of indicates to me that we are now taking a heavy youth first approach to a hell of a lot of stuff, which is really good. Because if you look at what we've done in recent years and the transfers that have worked and the transfers that haven't, you need to look at the Premier League signings, for example. Robin Cock, unreliable a lot of the time. Diego Llorente, kind of bad quite often. Rasmus Christensen, struggle to call him a footballer from time to time, which I think is a pretty valid opinion to have on him, but a lot of people have tended to disagree with me. Compare that with our youth players. So our Pascal Strauchs, our Crescentia Somervilles, our Ilan Meliers, our Archie Grays, and the fact that we've invested quite heavily in youth players means that we're sort of building and growing and improving in that regard by getting a hell of a lot of talent in through the door. And that talent develops here, and is spectacular in the long run. And I think it's a good approach. And in addition to that, it's an approach that other clubs are taking as well. Look around various divisions right now, and you see the fact that Leeds lost a very, very young player in the form of Finley Gorman to Manchester City for what was, I believe, rumoured to be around 4 million quid. But he was 14 years old, which sort of proves that very high quality young players are moving from club to club to club now and it sort of takes people a little bit by surprise and i can completely understand why because it's absolutely out of nowhere but it's an approach that i think we're going to look to take now as well you'll see news every single day of aston villa are signing a youngster from x uh, scum are signing someone from west ham's academy i think i saw the other day and that increased investment in academy stuff is doing really 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 well for football clubs including Chelsea, weirdly. They've thrown a hell of a lot of money at a hell of a lot of players, but it seems to be working for them. I don't understand how, but it's completely fine. And in addition to that, it also sort of follows what Leeds United were doing here, the Red Bull model. Now, this is the scary set of words that a lot of people won't like, but it isn't a case of turning Leeds United into a Red Bull Leeds or Red Bull Yorkshire or anything weird like that. No, it's more the case of focusing on the fact that international ability is something that is hugely undervalued in the world of football scouting. Too many times clubs will go, yeah, but is he proven in Europe? Or something along those lines. And you'll see that there is a hell of a lot of talent coming from Brazil or Argentina or Colombia, especially recently, or everywhere. Africa is another big example, and that's why I've called it the Red Bull model, because they invest so much money into finding out about African football that they end up picking out absolute gems from all over the place. And it's a model that is absolutely worth investing in because it means that in the long term, even if they don't play for you for years on end, they're still at the club. And you can still sell them for huge amounts of money if it comes to that. And a lot of the time, these players can become club legends. Just got to get a little bit lucky with it. And there are plenty of ways that it helps clubs that need to be considered. So first up, there are very, very clear financial benefits. Into players like this, and I'll use Somerville as an example. We signed Somerville for one and a half million pounds, sold him for 34. That is the financial benefit in a nutshell. Look for undervalued young footballers across the world of football, and you will make those profits time and time and time again, assuming that your 
scouting department is spot on and they know what they're looking for. And in addition to that, it goes beyond sort of the financial and into the sort of rules and regulatory stuff because it's better for squad registration rules. Because if you have a player, say, signed from... Let's have a think. Um, Say we pick someone out from the Farsley Celtic setup and ends up being a incredible player that can play at the Premier League level. If we've had him for three years before the age of 18 years old, then he counts as homegrown at the club rather than just homegrown in the nation. Homegrown in the nation is important as well. I think you need three years before the age of 21, which is why I think if we can sort something out with the Ngenge guy, it's going to be huge because we can have signed a 16-year-old but have him class as homegrown in England which is going to save stuff in squad registration things. And that makes things vastly simpler when we're trying to do squad planning in the long term. And in addition to all of that, it develops a tighter club culture because everyone's spent longer around Thorpe Arch. They know each other. They know what the club is like. I hate saying they know the club, but it's relevant in this case. And it means that you've got sort of that core ideology of what a Leeds United looks like when everyone has come through the system and knows what they're doing. If you look at the likes of an Athletic Bilbao, for example, they're always punching above their weight because the amount of investment they put into their academy is wild because they don't sign from outside the Basque country, even a little bit. Or you look at um, Barcelona. They sign from elsewhere as well, but La Masia pumps out talent after talent after talent after talent. And it's not just local, it's international. So remember, they signed Messi to La Masia at the age of like 12 or something like that. Incredible player. And was picked out for, let's be honest, not even a percentage of what his value will have been by the end of his career. And he became part of the culture of that club, where if you think Barcelona, you probably think Messi is one of the first names that come to mind. After Rafinha, of course. He's the best person from South America to play on the wing at that club. But at the end of the day, that all adds up to one thing as well. That adds up to the club getting better on-pitch performances. Because if you've got better players, if you've got a better culture, if you've got everything working well in tandem together, you're going to be able to perform better on the pitch. And yeah, there are some concerns about this entire thing. There's the potential to end up like Chelsea and you'll just stockpile players and lots of them will be mad because they're not going to play much. And that's going to happen sometimes. But let's be honest with our budgets, that's not going to be what happens anyway. And in addition to that, there is a risk if all of the investments flop, but you need to keep in mind the balance of probability here. The return on investment for one of these players doing incredibly well is colossal. We got Pascal Strouk for free. Sell him for £15 million pounds and he funds 15, not 15, 10 Crescencio Somervilles. Crescencio Somerville himself funded something like 20 equivalent transfer fees or something daft like that. You're able to do this en masse with young players and all you need is a couple of them to work out and it'll be okay. And there is a potential risk. And this is why I feel like we're not leaning into it too hard at the moment that it distracts from potential first team funding because... You need first team funding in order to push forward and do everything that you need to in the championship and get promoted. But long term is where this strategy lies. And Ngenge isn't going to cost too much because he's from a country that does not have that huge of a footballing culture and does not have a huge footballing economy, which matters and makes the difference. So the verdict, in my opinion, is it seems very, very smart if it's done well and Got a slightly itchy nose. Ow. And it feels like we're able to do it well. We just need to invest in it and make sure that we set ourselves that little bit of an infrastructure that makes sure that everything works okay. But at the end of the day, at the end of that recording, that is just what I think. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Like, subscribe. You can even become a shell member. It's 99p for the month, and you get videos like this one comfortably early. I think I'm releasing this one on Saturday, and it's currently Friday as I'm recording this. But I'm also recording this on stream, so uh, pop into the streams as well. That'd be great. Uh, But whilst we're discussing all that, let's have a little bit of a visit to one of our favourite places, Questions Corner. Um, If anyone in the live chat has any questions, pop them in the chat and we'll discuss absolutely all of them. Uh, For example, we had Luke state that it's uh, it's just our luck, really, because I recorded the Willy Nonto video right before this that injurable boy. But yeah, for the video, folks, hope you enjoyed. Like, subscribe, become a channel member, all the fun stuff. I'll see you later. ta